Hey, Bobcats, Mr. Flater here. Welcome to another great week at the Helena Middle School. And I got to make this quick because I got a lot of information to cover <clears throat> this week. Um, we've been talking about friendship characteristics the last four weeks, and I'm going to introduce something that is um, something I've developed over the last five years called Friendship Dartboard. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys get something out of it. I am going to warn you, you got to really pay attention to this because of the means in which I'm delivering it. Um, without further ado, make it a great week. I hope you guys like it this. All right, so normally I would love to be doing this Bob lesson on a marker board. Um, I've done this lesson with uh, several students in my office, but since I can't do that and since I'm all about Bob lessons and utilizing 2016 technology, I'm going to attempt to do this um, electronically. So I have this crosshairs that if you follow this is right below the 20 right here. Okay, so I'm doing this just so that we get, all get on the same page. So for those of you that know a dartboard, know that right here we have the bullseye. The bullseye is this green and this red part right here in the middle. We also have what I'm going to call the intermediate circle, which runs right here, which for those of you that know darts is a triple. If you hit it in one of these spots, it's a triple. But what I'm really concerned with is this circle that I am circling here that actually excludes the bullseye. So I'm talking right in here. The outer circle, um, for those of you that know darts, this double right here is my outer circle. And we're going to be talking about this area in here between the outer circle and the intermediate circle. So just to review, we have our inner circle, which is our bullseye. We have our intermediate circle, which is right in here, which has the triple circle right here on the perimeter. And then we're talking our outer circle, which is right out here. For this Bob lesson, we're going to ignore all of these numbers on the outside. All right, so now that we're all on the same page with um, the visual on the three different friendship circles, I'm first going to talk about the characteristics of the inner circle. Now, to review, the inner circle is the bullseye. And you'll notice something about the bullseye. Compared to the other circles, the bullseye is hands down the smallest. And it's like that for a reason. You can't have a whole lot of people in your inner circle. It's just not quite possible from a time and energy and effort perspective. Um, you've heard me say my favorite quote before, would you rather have 100 pennies or four quarters. And the reason I say that is because I think when it comes to friendship, I think we're better off having four very great friends rather than a hundred so-so friends. You'll notice you can't fit a hundred pennies inside that little inner circle. Um, but metaphorically, you can fit four quarters inside that inner circle. So characteristics of the inner circle. Inner circle are people who you consider great or your best friends. Newsflash folks, especially to some of our female students, um, because I see this more with female students than male students, you can have more than one best friend. I know best um, is also, is a lot of times um, translated into singular, but you can have multiple best friends. I know if you ask me about my friendships, uh, you know, I probably have a half a dozen people that I consider like my best friends. Um, friendship isn't a prioritizing type thing. Um, you can have multiple best friends. People who you confide in and share your innermost thoughts and feelings with. These are people in your inner circle. People who you have high levels of trust with. When I think about my inner circle, I think about if I was to leave my dog with somebody for the weekend, who would I 100% trust with with the highest degree of certainty that they would keep her alive and keep her out of harm's way, make sure she has water, make sure she has food. Um, some of you that know me and have met my dog, maybe walking to school outside my parents' house, know how much I love my dog and know how important she is to me. So these are people in my inner circle. People who you put the most time and effort into. Um, even though the inner circle is the smallest, it requires the most energy, the most effort to keep those friendship, those inner circle friendships alive and possible. And finally, people whose friendships you value the most. These are people that you just naturally connect with, that you trust with, that you confide in, that you consider to be your best friends. 
All right, we talked about the inner circle. Now let's talk about the intermediate circle. Just to review real quick, the intermediate circle, if you're looking on your dartboard on the left, is the blue and green alternating circle that is the smaller of the two circles. It's not the bullseye, it's not the outer one, but it is the intermediate one. Now you're going to notice a couple things about it. You're going to notice that it is many times larger than the bullseye. And that is because you're going to have more friends in your intermediate circle than maybe you do in your inner circle. And you're also going to notice that it is not as big as your outer circle. And that's because um, you're going to have more select people in your intermediate circle than you do your outer circle. So let's talk about characteristics of the intermediate circle. These are people who you consider to be good friends. Maybe not great friends, maybe not your best friends, but people you consider to be good friends. Um, these are people that maybe you don't keep in contact with every week or every day, but maybe you keep in contact with um, every month, maybe through text, maybe through phone call, maybe through social media. Uh, these are people who you kind of pick and choose what you want to confide and share your inner thoughts and feelings with. Maybe they don't know your whole life story, everything's going on in your life but they know they know most of it. Um, these are people who you have a moderate level of trust with. You may not trust them with the most important things in life, but you can you can trust them with most things. And obviously these are people whose friendship you value. All right, so finally, let's talk about characteristics of the outer circle. Just to review, the outer circle is the bigger part of the red and green that goes around the outer perimeter, and the inside part of it is the intermediate red and green. So you'll notice that the outer circle is the biggest part, and that's because this is where most of your friendships will be, um, especially as you get older. Um, these are people who you consider friends, not good friends, not great friends, but just people that you consider friends, people you're cool with, um, people that you get along with, people that you like to be around. Um, these are people who you don't necessarily confide and share your inner thoughts and feelings with, that they don't get to know, they don't have the privilege of getting to know everything about you. Uh, these are people who you like, uh, but don't maybe put the highest amounts of time or effort into. And, and this is where most of your friendships will be. Today is actually uh, my birthday. Um, shout out to the other February 28th birthdays. Uh, Caitlin Hamill and Avery Skabiski, happy birthday, you two. And and so I'm a little bit older. I've made more friends. I've come in contact with more people. And there's definitely I have a lot of friends out there, people that I consider to be friends. And but they're not intermediate circle friends, or they're not inner circle friends by any means. So as you get older, you know a lot of people will end up um, settling into this area. And when we go to this next slide, I'm going to explain why. So I'd like next to talk about friendship dartboard movement. Okay, we talked about, we defined the characteristics of the three levels of friendship. Your, your inner circle, these are the people you trust the most, you have the tightest relationships with. Your intermediate circle, these are, these are somewhere in between your inner circle and your outer circle. Um, there's only so much space in each circle of your friendship dartboard. And again, when we talk about your inner circle, it's, it's, it's small and it's not very big. And I think it grows bigger as you get older, um, as you get to meet more people and you get to identify more people that you have the most in common with that over time prove their worth to be in the inner circle. Um, you only have so much time and energy to give in friendships. You can't have... 15, 20, 25 best friends, it's physically impossible to put the energy and the time into um, making those friendships what they are. Again, good friendship needs time and energy and effort to put into those. And as human beings, we only have so much time every day to work on our friendships. Um, the thing I want to talk about, and I talk about this with a lot of students in my office, is that movement from one circle to the next is fluid and it's constant and you're constantly moving. I think if you were to ask me 20 some years ago when I was a, a student at HMS who was in my inner circle, I would say none of those people are in my inner circle today. They are, some are in my intermediate circle, some are in my outer circle, some aren't even in here, period. If you even look at my life in the last 10 years, I don't know how many people that I that were in my intermediate circle, or excuse me, that were in my inner circle 10 years ago are still in my inner circle today. That is constantly changing and 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 moving all the time and I talk to students all the time about that and that's something that's hard. That's something that's hard to deal with and I think one of my objectives in doing this lesson is to let you guys know that that friends come and go and friends change and the importance of friendship and the the circles of friendship are constantly changing and moving and that's a normal healthy 
part of growing up. So I'm encouraging you guys to spend some time reflecting on who you have in your inner circle, who you have in your intermediate circle, who you have in your outer circle, and why do you consider them to be in that part, and in whether they belong to be in that part. Maybe they need to be bumped up a circle. Maybe they need to be bumped out a circle. I don't know what that answer is. That's for each and every one of you to spend some time processing and figuring out. So let's talk about the other side of that. You guys have seen this list. If you want to move up the ranks of somebody's friendship, hey, these answers came from you wonderful students at the Helena Middle School. This came from you guys. This is what was important for you guys. If you want to become better friends with somebody, spend more time doing these 20 things. Conversely, if you're not spending a whole lot of time doing these 20 things, think about whether or not you should be. Okay, because we have the answer key right here. This is this is the 20 most important things from what I heard from you guys. The 20 most characteristics of, of being a friend from an 11 to 14 year old um, at Helena Middle School. The last part of this week's lesson is this is probably one of my favorite pictures. And I know I say this every week, but what can I say? I'm passionate about this stuff. I'm passionate about being one of your school counselors. I'm passionate about uh, being at the Helena Middle School here and getting to see you all every day. Um, this right here is a group of look, six, six, seven, eight, nine lions. And this quote is so true. It says, surround yourself with those on the same mission as you. Um, I think it's so true. Being a middle school student, and for some of you that are moving into high school here in the next year or two, your peer groups and who is in your inner circle, who is in your intermediate circle, who's in your outer circle becomes more and more important. Um, from that age group to 12, 13 through 17, 18 years old, um, your peer group is going to have so much importance on you and so much power on you and the decisions you make and, and, and what you do and how you spend your time and what's important to you. I encourage you to spend time with people that lift you up. Spend time with people that help you get to where you're going. Spend time with people that have the same interests as you and have the same goals as you and have the same passions as you and want the same things out of life because your friends will affect you more than anything else these next couple of years. And that's why I love this picture because it says surround yourself with those people that are on the same mission as you, that want the same things in life as you. And um, it's so true and it is so important because if one lion can lead the group astray and there's so much strength in the pack and so much strength in your friendships and friendships are so important. We've been talking about it the last five weeks now. So I hope you guys let this picture soak in and I hope you think about whether those people in your inner circle are on the same mission as you, those people in the, your intermediate circle are on the same mission as you. And maybe maybe that's a reason why people are in an inner circle or aren't in an inner circle. You know, maybe somebody isn't in your inner circle because they're not on the same mission as you, but you still want to be friends with them. And that's okay too. I have many conversations with students about that. Still being friends with somebody that isn't about the same things or making the same decisions that you are making. That doesn't mean you can't be friends with them. Maybe it just means that they're not in your inner circle. All right, my quote of the week, good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're there. And these are your inner circle type people. My jelly bean question of the week winners from last week. Congratulations, Caroline Bauer. Nice to see you at the Carol game Saturday, Caroline. Danny Stenmate. Mackenzie Skartvite. Holy cow, these are tough names again. Megan Hubler and Emily Mullet. Come see me before school, after school. Bring a friend. I've heard a rumor on the street that they get rewarded with jelly beans as well. All right, I got a new jelly bean question of the week. And I'm going to let this sit up for a few seconds, maybe a minute or so. Solve if you're a genius. 8 equals 56. <clears throat> 7 equals 42. 6 equals 30. 5 equals 20. And given all that, what does 3 equal? In other words, if... 8 equals 56, if 7 equals 42, if 6 equals 30, if 5 equals 20, then what does 3 equal? If you think you know the answer, get it in the um, the Bob Lesson box that's right between Mr. Myers and myself and Miss Pandas' office by Friday for a chance to win. 
I've said it before, and I will say it again, and I will always say it. Don't have a great week at the Helena Middle School. Make a great week at the Helena Middle School.